The buzzing anticipations surrounding the purported Canon EOS R7 Mark II has suddenly evaporated into a puzzling silence, causing a seismic tremor through the global photography community, which had crowned it as one of the most essential and highly anticipated APS-C cameras of 2025. Enthusiasts, wildlife photographers, and professional videographers alike were ready for what many predicted would be the definitive crop sensor hybrid workhorse, offering a revolutionary blend of next-generation performance, blistering fast processing power, and sophisticated video production tools designed specifically to push the boundaries of the APS-C category. This mythical successor to the celebrated Canon EOS R7 was slated to democratize high-end features, yet instead of the expected launch event, detailed product specifications leaks, or even a cryptic teaser campaign, all we've received is a deafening quiet. Multiple credible industry reports and insider whispers are now strongly suggesting that the Canon R7 II has been strategically and quietly delayed, with some sources indicating a possible launch deferral all the way back into mid to late 2026. While this news is undoubtedly a major disappointment for the vocal prosumer market segment fixated on mirrorless systems, a deeper examination reveals that this is not merely a logistical hiccup, but a highly calculated move by Canon, offering profound insights into their long-term market strategy, their commitment to the EOS ecosystem, and the evolving financial dynamics of the digital imaging sector. To truly decipher the reasoning behind this pivotal product roadmap adjustment, one must first reflect on the immense, and frankly, unprecedented success of the original Canon EOS R7. Upon its release, the R7 swiftly became a benchmark APS-C mirrorless camera, carving out a commanding position with its core specifications, a high-resolution 32.5-megapixel APS-C sensor, underpinned by the legendary dual-pixel CMOS AF2 for lightning-fast and intelligent autofocus, advanced subject detection capabilities covering animals, vehicles, and people, and truly incredible sustained burst speeds clocking in at an astounding 30 frames per second using the electronic shutter, or A. Robust 15 frames per second with the mechanical shutter, a dream for sports and wildlife photography. Beyond stills, it delivered exceptional oversampled 4K video at 60 frames per second and buttery smooth full HD 120 frames per second slow motion footage, providing immense creative shooting flexibility. Crucially, it housed a highly effective 5-axis in-body image stabilization system, rated for up to an industry-leading 7 stops of correction when paired with specific lenses, all packaged within a durable, weather-sealed magnesium alloy body weighing a mere 612 grams. This potent combination established the R7 as the perfect balance of price, cutting-edge performance, and essential portability for its target demographic of serious photo and video creators. Given this runaway success and the strong consumer demand signal, one might assume Canon would rush its successor to market, however, the reality is far more complex than simple inventory management or component shortages. While in the recent past, the most obvious explanation for such a delay would involve generalized production-related challenges, be it the lingering global semiconductor scarcity, supply chain disruptions, or specialized sensor fabrication issues. This explanation seems to break down under current scrutiny. Canon has successfully navigated the turbulent waters of the last few years, recently launching its high-margin, flagship full-frame cameras, including the much-lauded EOS R5 Mark II and the top-tier EOS R1, both of which arrived on schedule without any significant commercial setbacks. This clearly indicates that Canon's manufacturing logistics and production pipelines are robust and entirely stable. Therefore, if the R7 II is not being held back by a technical bottleneck or a failure in operations management, the true strategic rationale must be deeply embedded within Canon's overarching business model and competitive market strategy. The digital camera market has undergone a dramatic transformation over the last decade, fundamentally altering the role of the APS-C format. Historically, crop sensor cameras served as the essential entry point into the comprehensive EOS mirrorless ecosystem, appealing to budget-conscious beginners, advancing enthusiasts, and even some professionals who SPE. Cifically required the extra focal length reach for applications like birding and action sports. Yet, a profound shift has occurred, the distinction between APS-C and full-frame cameras has become significantly blurred. Full-frame technology has become dramatically more affordable, physically compact, and accessible than ever before. 
key models like the Canon EOS R8, often retailing for a highly competitive price point, and the EOS R6 Mark II, which has experienced strategic price reductions to maintain market share, now occupy a price bracket perilously close to the projected launch cost of a hypothetical high-end APS-C model. It is precisely at this juncture that Canon's delay strategy begins to make perfect financial sense. From a pure business profitability perspective, Canon generates a significantly higher revenue per customer when consumers commit to their full-frame systems. Not only do full-frame camera bodies command higher average selling prices and deliver superior profit margins, but they also necessitate the purchase of the more premium, and thus more expensive, RF lens lineup and high-end accessories effectively creating a higher barrier to exit and locking customers more deeply into the Canon RF mount ecosystem. By intentionally placing the Canon R7 Mark II delay into effect, Canon is almost certainly attempting to guide the consumer market toward these more financially lucrative full-frame alternatives. Consider the potential internal competition. A powerful new APS-C camera in 2025 could directly cannibalize sales of the more profitable R6 Mark II or even the R8. By withholding the R7 II, the segment of customers eagerly awaiting its arrival may find the wait intolerable and instead opt for an immediate upgrade to a full-frame camera, thus shifting their long-term spending toward higher-margin products. This is a subtle, yet remarkably effective, form of strategic product positioning, where the absence of a mid-tier model becomes a commercial lever, pushing consumers toward a more profitable upper tier. Furthermore, this trend is not isolated to Canon it appears to be a broader industry consensus. Nikon has also held back on the anticipated successor to its Z50, and Sony has been notably quiet regarding a true premium APS-C rival to the R7 for an extended period. The overall pace of development within the APS-C segment has perceptibly slowed across the entire industry, a direct reflection of where major camera companies are choosing to dedicate their constrained research and development and marketing resources. Historically, APS-C cameras resonated deeply with cost-conscious buyers who prioritized compact size and overall affordability. However, this customer base often relies on entry-level kit lenses or budget-friendly third-party glass, inherently leading to smaller profit margins for the camera manufacturer. In stark contrast, full-frame systems attract professional image makers and serious enthusiasts who are far more inclined and financially equipped to invest substantial capital in premium lenses, specialized accessories, and future body upgrades. In a global camera market that is continuously contracting due to the omnipresent dominance of high-quality smartphone photography, major players like Canon, Sony, and Nikon face an existential mandate to aggressively focus on the market segments that guarantee the greatest financial returns and shareholder value. Beyond the purely financial calculus, there is a significant marketing and psychological dimension to Canon's decision. Canon is a master of the psychology of anticipation. By indefinitely postponing the R7-2's release, the company effectively maintains a constant, low-level buzz of speculation, leaks, and rumors. This sustained hype generation ensures that when the camera finally does make its eventual debut, it will launch under a wave of massive, pent-up consumer attention almost guaranteeing a significantly stronger and more impactful market entrance. The matter of product launch timing is also critical, Canon's immediate focus. Throughout late 2024 and early 2025 has been unequivocally directed at its premium full-frame lineup, with the R5 Mark II and R1 acting as the central pillars of their technology showcase. These launches serve to solidify Canon's image as the undisputed leader in innovation, advanced engineering, and professional performance. Releasing the R7 II concurrently would risk not only stealing a portion of the Spotly GHT but, more detrimentally, creating a scenario of direct internal product competition. Why, a consumer might ask, should they commit to a $3,000 plus R6 Mark II when they could potentially acquire a vast majority of its core features in an R7 II for nearly half the expenditure? The delay meticulously prevents this unfortunate overlap, granting the high-end, premium models an unobstructed period to dominate the market conversation. Lastly, there is the fundamental issue of technological readiness and sensor evolution. While the R7's 32.5 MP sensor was revolutionary at its launch, by a projected 2026 release window, a new generation of advanced APS-C sensor technology will undoubtedly be available. 
Canon is likely waiting for a sensor platform that delivers genuine, measurable improvements in dynamic range, extreme low light performance, data readout speed, and critical power efficiency. Launching the R722 early with only marginal, iterative upgrades risks making the new model feel quickly outdated within a year or two. By patiently waiting, Canon can ensure that the eventual R72 offers a meaningful, compelling leap forward, thereby fully justifying its position and price point within the aggressively competitive mirrorless camera landscape. Ultimately, the ongoing saga of the Canon EOS R7 Mark II delay underscores one irrefutable fact, Canon is in absolute, calculated control of its long-term strategic roadmap. The camera is neither a vaporware fantasy nor a forgotten project, it is simply being meticulously positioned for maximum market impact and financial gain. By enforcing this calculated delay, Canon is simultaneously protecting its highly profitable premium lineup, ensuring the integration of future-proof technology, and subtly shaping core consumer purchasing behavior in a manner that delivers the maximum benefit to the overall brand and its expansive RF ecosystem. The wait for this advanced APS-C model will be protracted, but if Canon's strategy holds true, the eventual Canon R7 II could indeed become the definitive crop sensor camera that entirely redefines what is technologically possible, permanently blurring the functional lines between crop and full-frame performance once and for all, setting a new global industry standard for APS-C photography and videography.